God Hits. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So guys, thank you again for just liking, subscribing, sharing, and turning on your notifications and for joining me for another quick little episode where I'm doing these different three-part series on different topics and I'm using some of the journals that I have to help you guys out. I kind of noticed that I know that I have them, but a lot of people just don't really know how to use them. And I'm always hearing people talk about journals. So I'm like, you know what? Let me get a little bit more specific. And y'all, just so you know, the topics that I come up with are from me combing through your comments and just hearing some of the things you talk about. And it definitely has inspired, you know, my inspiration for these journals. Right now, y'all, I think I have about 27 up, 27 different ones. I made each and every one of them myself. They're all on Amazon. So today, though, in episode two of my three-part series, we're talking about favor. Now, if you heard the last one, that link is, is below this video in the description if you haven't. But it is called Three Keys to Personal Power. So today... We're talking about three keys to favor, and it is inspired by three of my journals, which are Brilliance and Billions, Yes and Amen, and Kind Rich Favor Right. So let me break this down for you. So how many of you know that favor is actually associated with work in the Bible? Now, I know a lot of times when we talk about, you know, may the favor of the Lord fall upon us and, you know, we, 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 we speak favor over ourselves and favor for other people and all the things, right? Which is dope. But I think if we had a bit of a different perspective, maybe just today on how we can approach favor, I think that it would make some things, uh, how should I say it? I think it might give you some perspective on some things, right? So check this out. So the thing I want you to check out is this scripture, okay? And it's a specific scripture on favor. And it is actually in Psalm 9017. And it says, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, the work of our hands. So it sounds like to me, God is willingly, openly giving up, giving us favor, but he's also saying, to the work of your hands. So basically, you should, to me, it sounds like you should be doing something right here. Like, hey, if you go ahead and do the work, I'm going to put some favor on what you're doing. I'm going to bless the work of your hands. You know, Deuteronomy 28 also talks about blessing the work of our hands as well. But it talks about other topics. This particular scripture, it talks about work. And letting the favor of the Lord be upon us and establish the work of our hands. So it sounds to me that it's a, it's a two-part deal, right? The favor of the Lord be upon us. And then once you say, hey, Lord, just show me favor. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to do what I need to do with my hands. And I'm going to roll from there. Now, the reason why I use that particular scripture to talk about today's inspiration is because I want you to start to get into the habit of expanding how you view God. If we keep reducing God to just blessing us, miracles, signs, and wonders, and not allowing ourselves to see God in an expansive way, meaning if we really have these dreams and these goals and these things that we want to do in our life, we really have the opportunity to do it. It doesn't matter if people told you you couldn't do it. It doesn't matter if you you had all of the good grades, but you didn't get a scholarship and your parents can't afford to take you. Now you're feeling like all these years went by and I didn't get a degree. What am I going to do? It doesn't matter if you were in a terrible relationship and that person abused you and told you you weren't good enough. It doesn't matter if the friends you thought you had kicked you to the curb and said you're not, you're not good. You ain't what you thought you was. It doesn't even matter because right there, God is saying, hey, if you do your thing, I got you. I will show you favor. I will take your hands, connect it to your body, and I will bless the work of your hands. I will empower you with my favor so that you can endeavor anything. And guess what? There's no caveat. There's no, there's no, uh, no catch. 
that it has to be connected to another person. No, it's you. So I don't know who needs to hear that part right there, but all of that stuff you've been believing about, oh, I can't do it, and you sitting on the sideline, you watching everybody else YouTube, but you feel like you're supposed to be doing a new YouTube, and God called you to do it, but you all scary about it, or you looking at, man, well, you all quiet because you know your friend baking cakes and cookies, but you want to bake cakes and cookies, but you don't want to seem like that's not something that you can do. Listen, it's millions and billions of people in this world, y'all. It's so many things that God has called us to do. There are many people who are stuck because they say, my family didn't believe in me. And they and I, and I don't even want to do this business no more because my family this and that. Y'all, most of y'all going to get it off of strangers. It ain't, listen, that's just a, a raw fact. Some people are able to successfully have family involved, but y'all, a lot of times God gives you a gift, a talent, a calling, an anointing, whatever it may be, and it may not even necessarily be attached to your family, especially in certain stages of it. So what I'm trying to get you to do again is expand. God is so merciful and bountiful, so bountiful, y'all, just so much going on if you really start to break down the words and not just the scripture, but breaking it down in context, reading before it and what's after it and really understanding it in totality, because that is what's going to help you to see the bigger picture. Now, let me tell you, one of the journals that I made, the first one we're going to talk about really quick is Brilliance and Billions. And there are people who are like, you know, a lot of times you get the people saying, oh, you're a Christian. You're supposed to be poor and broke and you're not meek if you have money. Child, please. I know my father in heaven want us all to be balling out of control. Because you want to know what you do with that if your money is right and you're using that, that money to serve him. You know how many people you can help? You know how much kingdom business you can do? Do you know how much stuff you can get done that pushes God's agenda to make people healed and happier and whole? Are you kidding me? I'm never going to believe that. I'm never going to believe, though, either that you should be worshiping money and you should be worshiping these things. But people got to be crazy to think that God don't want us to get up in there and live a life like some good proverbs and, 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 and work to eat and handle our business. It, listen, we go through seasons. We go through times when we up and times when we down. Some people work sometimes because they can't find a job. Sometimes they're building. Sometimes people work and they're balling out of control and everything is great. Then something happens and their money start bleeding. Y'all, that's why I say all the time, we got to keep our mouth off people. I wish I would have learned that earlier in life. I did know that, but I, you know, just making mistakes. But you got to keep your mouth off people because so quickly your life can change. Your life can change so quickly. And if you don't understand that, regardless of how life can throw you a curveball, regardless of what can happen, you can always bounce back from it. But just rest assured, you can always land in a different place in your life that you least expect. You can always end up in a space where when you look at everything for what it is, there is so much more that can happen. And many times we are sitting on a new outcome and a new experience and we have not allowed ourselves to let God be God and let him bless the work of our hands so that we can see the favor come into our lives because we are operating in that favor. It's so hard for us to do that as human beings. I could say I've struggled with that too before. But that's why when I came up with the Brilliance and Billions journal, I did that one because I wanted to come a little differently. Now, when you go to this journal, y'all, it is basically three things that I break down. Your values, your why, and your goals, okay? And for this you basically, first of all, of course, it's power statements because I love me a good power statement and a bunch of good prompts. But this one says, I'm brilliant, I'm capable, I'm consistent. And then if you go down a little bit on that same page, it gives you the prompt, I will complete this goal. And then you have some lines underneath and you can, you can start that process. And I really love the part that asks about your goals in particular. Once you pick out a main one, it says, add a summary of your goals here. This can be a list of goals for personal, professional, long-term, and short-term. Whatever you'd like to remind yourself of goal-wise. So I love that. I think it would be extremely helpful. And the other part that I think is awesome about this part when you think about favor. And I know you're like, how does this tie into favor? I got you right here. So in the front of the, the journal, I ask, which one are you? And I'm asking if you're a pioneer, a visionary, a trailblazer, or a trendsetter. I have a brief explanation of each, and then you can kind of determine which one you are for yourself. You might be all of them, one of them, multiple. It doesn't matter. But this ties back to favor because we talk about blessing the work of our hands. If you are any one of those things, you are going to technically be put in a position where you are going to have to cultivate something on a large level. 
Even if you're setting a trend, if you have vision, if you are blazing a trail, if you are pioneering something, you will have to have your hands blessed because there is work that you will be doing and you will be leading it. You will need godly, clear leadership to make sure that you execute that thing properly. And that will require God's favor. Now, in addition to that one, the next one that I highlight is yes and amen. Now, let me break that one down to you. That one is, if you know that scripture, the blessings of the Lord are yes and amen. Now, this one is more tailor-made to those of you who know and understand that scripture in 2 Corinthians. And it's 2 Corinthians 1 and 2. And this is where you basically say, okay, the promises of God, the promises of God over my life, the favor of God over my life, I want to make those work in tandem. I want to be so open to hearing God with clarity so that I can actually operate and the promises that he gives me, and I will stand firm in the favor that he's going to give me because he's going to bless the work of my hands, and I, in turn, will use my hands. And so that one is pretty straightforward. It's not a whole lot of fuss and muss with it. It just takes you straight on through it. And the last one, y'all, again, I like to just give y'all these tools just in case you want to use them. But as I said on the last video, y'all, you can use anything you want. You can use your notepad. You can use your own journal. You can use anything you want as long as you get the job done. I don't really care. I just want you to be great. I want you to get to the level God wants you to. And I really want you to, to hear God clearly on your next moves. Okay. The last one is something that's personal to me. This was inspired by my mother's maiden name and my, my other, the other side of my family's name, right? And if you don't know me, you can't know me, but if you drop what, if you look at the cover of this one, kind, rich, favor, right? If you can tell me what the first last name is and the second last name is, I will send you the journal for free, but you cannot be somebody who knows me. I'm going to know if you know me and I'm not going to tell you. So if you know me and you hear this, have somebody who does not know me, give them the answer and then I'll, I'll give it to them. Okay. But anyway, this one was really inspired by wisdom, just having an abundance of wisdom and understanding the favor of God on our lives. And I basically, basically break down through scripture and prompts and plenty of spaces to write. I talk about compassion. I talk about righteousness. I talk about favor. I talk about kindness. So it is loaded with opportunities for you to really understand what the favor of God is like. I know this seems like a unique thing that I'm talking about lately, y'all, but I feel like going into the second quarter, which starts April 1st, we have to equip ourselves in second quarter to see the things that happened that did not happen in first quarter. We got to at least start seeing the manifestation of those things in second quarter, especially the things that we're not waiting to fall out of the sky, especially the things that we know God is going to give us the opportunity to experience. OK, so and, and, and what I mean is experience that through the work of our hands. And since we know that it's already in the word of God, that if we commit to working and using our hands that he's given us, he's already saying, hey, I'm going to show you favor. If you do what you got to do, then y'all, all it takes is for us to start to write the vision and make it plain, which is why the journals are great. We have to speak life. And then it just starts a snowball effect of truly understanding the keys to God's favor. So. Those three keys are number one, you want to begin to operate in the brilliance of God so that you can see the billions of God so that you can do kingdom work. The second thing is yes and amen. That's how you become a person that is in agreement with the favor of God. And then the last one is we want to keep trying and persistent. Even if we're not like this all the time, we got to keep trying until we get it right. Get it right. We want to walk in kindness, righteousness the richness of the father and the favor of God. These are very important for us guys. So again, if you want to get any journal, you can hit the link below the, pres uh, the prescription box. Now, Lord have mercy. Y'all know I don't have no prescriptions. <laughs> this is, uh, and I'm saying subscription box. I meant to say below this video in the comments, in the description section. There you go. My bad. <laughs> and you can get your, uh, your copies from there. And again, just check out all of the offerings, just many things to try to help you to live your authentic purpose. And prayerfully, you'll get it through these types of interesting videos and inspiration. Okay. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, turn on your notifications. I'm Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too.